Hello, I'm Johan Venter and welcome back to my channel where we strive to make online learning more engaging and effective. Online teaching and learning often lack a crucial element, engagement. This missing ingredient is key because learners frequently do not interact with their learning materials. This is where H5P comes in. Take a look at some of my other videos where I discuss H5P in more detail. In short, H5P allows educators to create interactive learning materials that students can actively engage with and receive instant feedback from within the learning management system, the LMS. When set up correctly, the LMS can also provide valuable feedback to both the teacher and the learner regarding the learner's progress or areas that need improvement. Traditionally, we create our H5P interactivities directly within the LMS. However, there are times when we need to use an external tool. H5P.org used to provide this capability, but that service is being phased out. Thankfully, we have Lumi. Lumi is an excellent tool that helps us create H5P content when our LMS does not support it, or if we prefer working offline. Lumi is free, open source desktop application that allows you to create and edit H5P content without needing an internet connection. This makes it a versatile and reliable solution for educators everywhere. In this video, I will guide you through the process of downloading, installing and using Lumi to create engaging H5P content. We will explore the main features of Lumi and demonstrate how to create a simple interactive activity and show you how to export and integrate your content into an LMS. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how Lumi can enhance your online teaching, making your learning materials more interactive and engaging for your students. So let's dive in and discover how Lumi can transform your online learning experience. Downloading and installing Lumi is quick and hassle-free. Initially, I was concerned about potential warnings regarding my available disk space, as my C drive is quite full. However, Lumi proved to be lightweight and efficient, requiring minimal memory. First, navigate to the Lumi website and download the installer suitable for your operating system. For me, the installer was downloaded directly to my downloads folder. The installation process itself was straightforward. After clicking on the installer, the setup completed in about 20 seconds. Once finished, I was greeted with a promising new icon on my desktop. You'll recognize this icon as the same one that appears with an H5P package when you download an H5P interactivity from another site. I performed my installation on a Windows 10 machine, but the equivalent processes in other operating systems such as Mac OS and Linux should be equally hassle-free. Here are some general steps for different operating systems. Windows, download the installer from the Lumi website. Locate the installer in your downloads folder. Double-click the installer and follow the on-screen instructions. In about 20 seconds, the installation is complete and the Lumi icon will appear on your desktop. Mac OS, download the installer from the Lumi website. Open the downloaded .dmg file, drag the Lumi app into your applications folder and launch Lumi from your application folder and the icon will appear in your dock. Linux, download the app image or DEB package from the Lumi website, make the app image executable or install the DEB package into your package manager. Run the Lumi application and it will be ready to use. Regardless of your operating system, Lumi provides a seamless installation experience, allowing you to quickly get started with creating interactive H5P content. These steps are also explained in a short, free, mini Moodle course on my site. Registering and enrolling is free and risk-free. Now that you have Lumi installed, let's move on to exploring its interface and features in the next section. Once I launched the application, I was asked to agree to some basic but necessary privacy policies. After that, I was presented with a clean workspace, 
featuring two main options to launch the H5P editor or to explore Lumi Analytics. In a future video that I will give a link to up here, I'll explore performance tracking with H5P. So I expect that is where the analytics option may come in. Since we want to create H5P content, let's launch the editor. In the H5P editor, you have the choice to either create a new package or edit an existing one. For this demonstration, I chose to create a new one. For the purpose of this video, we'll create a simple multiple choice item with one question and some seriously baffling alternatives. Since this is the first package I'm creating with the editor, none of the content libraries are installed yet. So, before I can compose my very difficult question, we need to get the multiple choice content type. The installation runs quietly in the background and once installed, I can simply click to use it. With the multiple choice editor now available, two very helpful options are visible. First, the tutorial. This link provides a comprehensive guide on how to create multiple choice questions. An example, this link offers a sample of multiple choice questions to give you an idea of what you can create. These links will direct you to the h5p.org site and are incredibly useful if you are new to creating H5P content. In this video, we will delve deeper into the valuable features and best practices for using H5P effectively. Now, let's proceed to create our multiple choice question. I'll demonstrate each step, highlighting useful tips and tricks along the way. Each multiple choice question requires a minimum of three essential elements. A title for the question. Think about this very carefully because the title is used in reports to both the learner and the teacher. It will be helpful if the learner and the teacher both know that the student is struggling with a particular concept. Rather than saying question 13, instead specify what question 13 is about in the title. Question stem. This is the main part of the question itself. Ensure that the stem is clear and concise. And alternatives. Provide several alternatives with at least one that is labeled as correct. In addition to these basics, I want to use the other interactive elements available to me. These include text tips, offer hints or additional information to help the learner, text to display if the alternative is selected, provide immediate feedback when a learner selects an option, and text to display if the alternative is not selected. Again, offer feedback when a learner chooses not to select an option. When using H5P in a formative assessment environment, it's important to give the learner as much feedback as possible. Use tips appropriately so as not to give the answer away and provide feedback for both selected and non-selected alternatives. This video contains a section on formative assessments in H5P. Please look at it. Once my question is created, I have to choose what my overall feedback will be and what behavior settings should apply and what text over overrides should apply. Let me show you what I did with each. Overall feedback. Since my question is only worth one point, feedback for less than 100% will indicate to the learner that an error was made. And feedback for 100% will indicate that the learner was correct. Please refer to the mini Moodle course where I'm, that I mentioned earlier. It contains a more complex example of a multiple choice question with five correct alternatives. Hence, scoring intervals of 20, 40, 60, and 100% will be, will be applied. Behavior settings. Depending on the constraints you want to place in your learners, you can choose whether to enable the retry and show solutions buttons. Generally, in formative assessment situations, I leave these enabled. However, in summative assessment situations, you might not want learners to revisit unsuccessful attempts or see the solutions to attempts. Points allocation. Consider 
whether to award one point for the task or more points for the task with several correct alternatives, such as the more complex example in the mini Moodle course. Bear in mind your LMS's activity grade and activity completion settings. The two systems should talk to each other. The rest of the behavioral settings are self-explanatory and I experimented with them to achieve the desired effect. Text overrides and translations. These settings help with assistive technology and allow you to use terms different from those that are standard in H5P. I chose to leave the default settings as they are. By carefully setting up these elements, you can create an effective and interactive multiple choice question that enhances the learning experience. Creating engaging and effective H5P content is crucial if your primary goal is fostering learning rather than focusing on final summative assessments. Here are some tips to help you achieve this. Use tips and feedback. Incorporate tips to guide learners without giving away the answers. Provide feedback for each option when selected and when not selected. This immediate feedback helps learners understand their mistakes and corrects their misconceptions. Offer comprehensive feedback on scores achieved to help learners gauge their understanding and progress. Incorporate graphics and illustrations. Use relevant graphics and illustrations to illuminate complex concepts. Visual aids can enhance understanding and retention, making the learning experience more enjoyable and effective. Utilize a variety of interactivities. Diversify the type of interactivities you create, mixing different formats like quizzes, interactive videos, drag and drop activities and presentations can keep learners engaged and catered to various learning styles. Accessibility and usability considerations. Ensuring that your H5P content is accessible and user-friendly is essential for reaching all learners, including those with disabilities. And here are some recommendations. Provide alternative text for graphics. Always include alternative text descriptions for any graphics display. This ensures that learners using on-screen readers can understand the content. Use clear descriptions for interactive controls. Make sure that the descriptions of the controls in your interactivities align with the normal language and terminology your students use. This clarity helps learners navigate the content more easily. These descriptions can be set using the text overrides and translations feature in H5P. Customizing these settings ensures that all learners, regardless of their background, can effectively interact with the content. Maintain consistency and simplicity. Keep the design of your H5P activities consistent and simple. Overly complex designs can distract learners and make navigation difficult. Test for accessibility. Use tools and resources to test your H5P content for accessibility. Ensuring that your content meets accessibility standards will help you to create an inclusive learning environment. By following these tips, you can create H5P content that is not only engaging and effective, but also accessible to all learners. This approach enhances the learning experience and ensures that everyone has the opportunity to succeed. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found these tips helpful. Don't forget to check out the mini Moodle course linked in the description below for more detailed examples and additional resources on creating H5P content. Happy teaching!